like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. When it's a swim. Hey everybody, welcome to the post-show wrap-up of The Shrimp Tank. You can listen to us live on the radio or our podcast on the Business Radio Network. Every single week from 11.30 to 12.30, we bring you great content. You can catch a replay on shrimptankpodcast.com or you can download us on iTunes. We had a wonderful discussion today with our good friend, local business owner Cody Hicks, who's the chief brisket officer. This is a title not all of us will get. Of Atlanta Eats and Bread and Butter Productions. So, Cody, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's been a blast. So, Cody, uh, I was really curious, and one of the things we touched on on the show is, like, how did you take the leap? How does one get into the restaurant um, media business? Yeah, uh, interesting question for me. You know, probably unique for me is that a lot of entrepreneurs, they, you know, are, are doing nothing or they're working for somebody else and they take the, the leap on their own. Um, for me, I had a business partner, Stake Shapiro, who um, had just recently uh, been acquired by Lincoln Financial Media. And basically, we came up with the concept together. And he was the visionary. He was really driving that of, let's do this. Let's start a new media company here in Atlanta and, and around food and dining. I was a little bit more hesitant, which is really the dynamic of our partnership as he's usually the, the you know pushing to the foreground and, and leading I'm the more hesitant kind of uh, cautious one so for me it was really with his urging um, seeing an opportunity doing enough research and, and figuring out the the true business opportunity that we had before jumping in um, so in scaling this and and you know so you started it and now you're growing it what's the biggest challenge yeah, um, I guess the, the biggest challenge is how do you reinvent yourself, right? So there's, there's limitless opportunities. And for us, you know, the immediate thing that we always hear is you're doing Atlanta Eats, you're going to do Knoxville Eats or Charleston Eats or Miami yeah. Eats. And for us, it's very hard to scale a local media company. And so for us, the way we've scaled and, and reinvented ourselves is – truly taking our core competency, which is video content creation around food and dining, and creating branded content for other companies across the country. So you look at verticals like casinos and hotels or uh, the air, you know, the, the, the um, airline industry and what Hartsville Jackson's doing with, with food. And you look at automotive. You know, the good thing about food is um, it's a passion point for people. So it's like sports. It's like music. These advertisers want to associate with something that their target demographic is passionate about. So we've reinvented ourselves by almost vertically integrating you know, vertically scaling and, and creating the content ourselves and then creating content across the country for other brands. How did you guys reinvent yourself from, you know, you're a sports station and obviously Steak was yeah. a sports personality and getting the public to believe you guys around food. They know you knew sports. Yeah. But how did you get, how do you get someone, if you make that transition from one business to another, to get them to believe right. about something new when they see right. a personality they knew from some somewhere else? Helps you have a first name steak. Yeah. <laughs> it gives you a little bit of credit you know, credibility. Steak, steak tips with Kevin Rapp when we did yeah. a radio show. Um, yeah. But in all seriousness, you know, there was some uh, some concern when we kind of strategize of, you know, this is a sports guy trying to do a food show. What credibility does he have to do that? And, and for us, we really invested in the product. So, you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is we hear all the time, you know, like Steve Coonan, former Turner executive now mm-hmm. with the Hawks, mentor, personal friend, you know, he says that Atlanta Eats is the best looking locally produced show in the country. And so for wow. us, the credit credibility was built through the product and the quality of the product. Um, you know, Steak's a great, he's an entertainer, he's a personality. So there was no concern about his ability, but it was getting people to tune in, give them a reason to tune in, um, and then keep them coming back through the quality of the, the programming. Now, I waited to bring this up on the post-show wrap-up, and I actually didn't bring it up on the show, so you'll hear it here, here, right here uh, live. But Atlanta Eats actually won an Emmy over this last year, which is truly amazing. Not something yep. a lot of people get to do. So I'm wondering, you have a lot of diversity in your advertisers that I see on Atlanta Eats. Why would a business owner out there who has a choice to spend advertising on radio or to do podcasts or whatever it may be, why would they – What's which way or why would they choose to do it on something like a yeah. food show? It's a great question. So majority of our advertisers are non-food related, so banking, telecom, insurance, automotive, and it really comes down to what your consumer is passionate about. So it's no different than why would a car um, um, advertiser or do a sponsorship deal with the Atlanta Braves or the Atlanta Hawks right. or you know uh, sponsor a a rock festival um, at you know um, you know at um, Verizon Wireless Amphitheater. It's connecting to your target consumer through a passion point. And so food is something that in today's culture, it's just part of the zeitgeist. It's what people um, care about now. And so for us, you know, we're one of the few in the country that's 100% focused on food and, and using food as a, a medium to market to a consumer. Um, but it's about that passion point. When you can, um, as an advertiser, 
connect to something that people are passionate about, it creates that emotional connection that drives uh, brand affinity and, and purchase habits and all those things that these guys are looking to accomplish. Best meal for an anniversary dinner in Atlanta? Aria. 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 Yeah, Jerry Clascala. Yeah, amazing food, amazing experience, super romantic room. Um, have to be Aria. Well, there you heard it, folks, on the post-show wrap-up. So, Cody, for folks that are watching the show in here and either, A, they want to just watch the program, they want to learn more about Atlanta Eats, the great events that you have here, the experiences you have in Atlanta, or they actually have a business and they might want to advertise yeah. on Atlanta Eats, how can they get in touch with you and great. your company? So, TV show um, on Peachtree TV every Saturday from 7 to 8 p.m. and then on Sundays from 10.30 to 11.30 on Peachtree TV. Uh, you can check us out on any device, on any platform. AtlantaEats.com is our website. Any social channel, just search Atlanta Eats. And then for me personally, you can reach me by email, Cody at AtlantaEats.com. Well, I've learned anything on the post show wrap-up too here. Think about the titles that you use in your company because Chief Brisket Officer, the first day I saw it, it stuck with me. It's been there before. So thanks again for coming on the program. Thanks to you for watching the post-show wrap-up of The Shrimp Tank.